Welcome to the Savvy Luminary Podcast, Astrology for Entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Leslie Tagorda, creator of the Astro Brand Method, business astrologer, brand designer, author, and Aquarius boss woman. I help visionary spiritual entrepreneurs and impact makers like you illuminate and amplify your unique star powers so you can be the luminary you were born to be. All right, Luminaries, I have a special, special treat for you. Well, it's a special treat for me, so I hope it's a special treat for you. My favorite of all time, Pisces Rising, Pisces Moon, and Libra Sun, the one and only Natalie Miller. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Hi, Natalie. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for coming on to the Savvy Luminary podcast and sharing your dreaminess with us. Mm, I'm so happy to be here. I wanted to invite Natalie on for a number of reasons. I've wanted her on for so long, but there are certain conditions that she wasn't allowed to be on, but now she is totally free. Mm -hmm. Um, And with our upcoming Taurus new moon, I couldn't think of anyone better to invite to join me in ceremony than Natalie Miller, because she is the queen of plenty. (laughs) I am like loving all of these monikers you are bestowing upon me. Um, (laughs) Leslie, I will take these. I will take these. Well, gosh, I think we've known each other for at least three years now. Mm -hmm. We we met each other as members of a mastermind and kind of grew up in our businesses together, kind of found our voices together. Mm -hmm. We did some collaboration. (laughs) Yes. Oh, my gosh. I cannot wait till we get to go back to New Mexico, to Taos. Yes. Sign me up. Mm -hmm. Um, But so what I, but we are still in Taurus season. And if you listen to my last podcast episode, it was all about values and how we add value and looking to our Taurus, looking to our Venus, looking to different elements that are wounded or maybe wounded in Taurus that kind of prevent us from stepping into our plentiness. Mm. And Natalie, why don't you, what you are such an expert on this. Can you give us, what does plentiness mean to you? Oh my gosh. So plen, plen from plenty is fullness. It's full. And, you know, when, when I think about plentiness in my own, in my own life, and maybe even more than in my life, in my worldview, what I'm thinking about is that there is so much. So we all know that idea of like, you know, the glass is half full of water. So is it half full or is it half empty, right? The, the pessimist would see it as half empty and the optimist would see it as half full. I think that when I think of plentiness, I think about, you know, not only is the glass half full, but there are oceans. (laughs) Not only is the glass half full, there are rivers, there are glaciers, there is water everywhere. And water is generated, right? We, ha- we live in an ecosystem where water rains down and then it evaporates back up. So plentiness, I think, really is embracing the fullness of our circumstances, the fullness of our situations. Oh my gosh, you, of course, you are speaking my talk because <laughs> the, in the last episode when I was talking, when I was speaking about Taurus season and how we are tapping into our value, this idea of Taurus, we can start to hoard, we can start mm-hmm. to overeat, even if we've passed that fullness, because we don't feel full, we don't feel plentiful, no matter how much money you're making, how much profit you're making, like never being satisfied. Mm. So it doesn't even have to do with how much money is in your bank to feel abundant and prosperous Mm. is what I'm hearing you say as we're talking Mm -hmm. about plentiful plentiness plentiness yeah I love that you know I've been refining my elevator speech because right now my my elevator speech assumes that we're like in the empire state building we're (laughs) we're going for a long ways right (laughs) (laughs) it's very long but as I've been refining it I've been thinking about how you know The people with whom I work want to live well and do good. Mm -hmm. And there is a richness in living well that doesn't have a lot to do with what's in your 401k 
balance yeah. sheet, right? If I can have millions of dollars and I can be doing harm and I can be living stressfully, I can be living, um, you know, feeling like I never have enough. So for me, yes, it is much more kind of a way plenty living plentifully is a way of being. And I think, you know, to your point about the hoarding, there's also like a, there's a generosity, right? So I'm going to, I'm going to trust that just like the oceans evaporate up into the sky and then that water rains back down, there's a cycle, there's a water cycle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to trust that there's a wealth cycle and that as I get more wealthy, more rich. And I don't mean that in the small sense of the word. And I don't, I don't think your listeners and your clients, Mm -hmm. they don't want it in the small sense of the word either. No, not at all. Not Mm -mm. just money, (laughs) more than not just, not just money, like beautiful mornings, Yeah, like, like a neighborhood where you belong and you give and you receive. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So that kind of richness and that kind of wealth that we start to believe that generosity is generative, that when I'm giving and I'm generous, I'm generating more opportunity. I'm generating more abundance. I'm generating more goodwill. I'm generating the kind of changes that I want to, to make in the world. I'm just typing down these notes because it's all so good. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of this book and I've been talking about it a ton on my podcast because I'm completely obsessed. Mm. It's um, by Robin Wall Kimmerer. It's called Braiding Sweetgrass. Have you ever read this? Do you know what's wild is just yesterday, a woman on some Facebook was like, hey, let's start a thread of our favorite books. Mine is Braiding Sweetgrass. <laughs> Every, every page is yellow here uh, with my highlighter. And the reason why I was bringing this up is because the concept that you're talking about this regenerative, this generous, this generating, mm-hmm. um, it's a concept that she talks about also from a sustainable harvest kind of system where we mm-hmm. are reciprocal and how we are now because we're looking at social equity like that's a big thing for me is social equity how do we increase profitability but in this way that is ethical that in this way that is sharing of resources mm-hmm. and one of the things about noticing our value is that it is a gift it is a responsibility that we have to contribute into mm-hmm. the world mm-hmm. that but what she says is like, we have a diversity of value. There's all kinds of things that we just have to spend a little bit of time and really noticing what are we really good at and putting it into the world. Because if we're not putting into the world, we're just taking and taking and taking. Mm-hmm. And then we're not living in this reciprocal kind of society, mm. being generous, trusting in that process of generating. And oh, I just love that, the visual that you put on top of everything. Oh, good. Well, no, I really like that. And, you know, even just to think about like, so, you know, let's say I'm a business owner and I have a small team, right? Um, we all know how much Leslie loves her small team because, yes. right? Like, hey, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Jeff. <laughs> I love Jeff too. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, when I am generous with my team, my team shows up generously for me and for the business. And so we go higher together, right? We go further together. We go deeper together. And I think that, you know, the, certainly the kind of person I want to be, the kind of person my clients want to be are the people who are doing good and making that contribution, like you said, but are also are living well themselves are kind of understanding that in order to be able to do that, I'll have to live well, which maybe means sometimes I'll have to slow down or sometimes I'll have to ask for help or sometimes like there needs to be a valuing of everyday life. What does not, not what does my dream life? What does my Instagram life? What does that look like? What does my actual everyday life feel like when that feels full and spacious and good it's so much it's so much it's not 
easier. It's so much more possible to be who we want to be in the world because it's not very easy. The, the world isn't really made right now for people who want to do good and for people who want to live well. <laughs> not yet. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. We're building it. We're building yes. it together, but, um, but it's, it's challenging. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, just from an astrological perspective, when I looking at your chart in kind of in the Placidus format, you have your North node in the seventh house. Mm -hmm. And what I'm realizing is that all of my favorite collaborators and co-creators, we all have our North nodes in the seventh house, meaning like we are supposed to build this together to rise all up together. Mm -hmm. And I, I, this is what I've been kind of speaking about since the beginning of 2021, just from this astrological perspective, Mm -hmm. is that this, we are done with the top down hierarchies. Mm -hmm. The people who are going to succeed on the sustainable long term are the ones that are going to collaborate and give and create community with each other. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, do you remember, um, President Obama said he, he, the, the, the right got got very angry about this. They were talking about like roads and bridges and infrastructure. President Obama was wanting to invest more money in that. And it looks like maybe that now is finally going to happen. Maybe, maybe here in 20, (laughs) after a few bridges have collapsed (laughs) after, after a few (laughs) metaphorical and literal (laughs) after, after a lot of shit has burned down. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So, um, but I remember, you know, he said like, you know, people were talking about like, oh, you know, you can't tax us to make us pay for that. And he was like, you didn't build that. You didn't build that by yourself. Do you remember how much trouble he got into for that, 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 that claim you didn't build that by yourself. And that's, he didn't say by yourself, but that's really what he meant. Right. We are doing this together the challenges that we face are, are big. And so we need to come together to face them. And the dreams that we have are big and we need to come together to realize them. And I think, you know, when we're not willing to collaborate, when it's like my way or the highway that belongs to me, right? I am the queen and you are my followers or however that works. Right. There's such a scarcity consciousness deeply, deeply embedded in that Mm. perspective, because there is a sense that I got to stake my, I got to scribble, scrabble, stake my claim, dig my claws in, right? Like you can't have it, (laughs) pull it in close to my chest so that nobody, nobody else can, can touch it or tell me what they think or see it or whatever. And, um, you know, Unfortunately, a lot of times the way that, well, I will say this, the way that power has been working Mm -hmm. has coexisted with that. But as we can see, and you see it with the, with the Royal family, the British Royal family, you see, you see it everywhere, right? It doesn't, it, it doesn't work anymore. It's just blatantly, obviously does not work anymore. Every time someone pulls in really close like that, everything starts to crumble because, yes. because it, it, it can't hold the center can't hold. It's, it's um, you, you have to start, like there has to start to be a reduction in mm-hmm. impact in power in um, in reach when that happens, because it's based in scarcity. The whole grab is based in scarcity. Yeah. And we can always notice when we're looking, when we're working or when people, other people are working from this place of scarcity, that's like all that kind of bro marketing that Mm -hmm. always like, you know, it's your last final days and by now and all like, I have what you have. There's only one way to do things. And Mm. Pluto sitting at the very tail end of Capricorn, (laughs) just drilling down and saying, F you time to change. Mm hmm. Yes. Pluto. It's fun. Pluto and Capricorn is like, nice, (laughs) nice try. This mountain is crumbling beneath your feet. It's a volcano actually. Yeah. Thank (laughs) goodness. (laughs) Yes. You climbed your mountain, but it was a volcano. Surprise. (laughs) Well, oh my gosh. So yes, plentiness about being full and embracing your fullness about being generous and giving from your full cup 
uh, such a beautiful um, Taurus energy. But, you know, we do, like what you were mentioning right before we were um, recording about this kind of reckoning <laughs> that comes with not following our plentiness or maybe having some wounding in our Taurus. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. I have Chiron in Taurus. I actually, I have Chiron in Taurus at the Chiron discovery degree. So, oh, no way. <laughs> yeah. Because Chiron was discovered in 1977, which mm-hmm. is when I was born. So, um, so yeah. An astrologer once told me, she was like, she was like, that's really heat. Like, like this, this wounding is always going to be so important because it was the whole world was watching. <laughs> And actually, that's how it feels sometimes. The whole world was watching when Chiron was where you, where, where, where it is for you. So, yeah. Yeah. So in Aries season and the last Aries new moon, I noticed that a lot of people that came to the new moon ceremony, like me, had Aries in Chiron and Aries. So Mm -hmm. the wounded leader. (laughs) Yeah. wounded initiator and so for those of us who like Natalie has Chiron in Taurus the wounded what, what would you say value maker the wounded um abundance creator or the wounded creator yeah and and even the uh, the, the wounded haver the wounded haver yes <laughs> The wound, which I know haver isn't really a word but it's like it is it is difficult Yes, it is difficult to have. <laughs> yeah. Or to and to appreciate what you have. Yes, and to appreciate well, or or to like to trust it, to trust its mm. steadiness. Um to um, you know, I was saying that in my generation, like I was eight and I I thought a teacher was going to outer space, and then her spaceship yeah. exploded when the challenger blew up, right? Mm. And then I was, and then I was a young woman, and I was I was 21 and I was I was living in a city for the first time, and then planes flew into the World Trade Center. Like yeah. then I was ready to get a job, and it was 2008 and the stock market crashed. It's like, you know, there's sort of um, experience after experience for those of us growing up this way that at kind of these, these, and I don't mean to say it only affects us, of course, it affects everybody, but at pivotal moments in our consciousness, it's like, oh, what you thought was promised is so not promised. Like, you know, you're, you're, you, you haven't yet sort of fully grasped what's real yeah do you is that you mentioned earlier with me before we recorded that this idea of settling for less than you want do you think that's a result of witnessing so much like kind of like things pulled up from under you like your your fairy tale expectations Mm -hmm. totally popped Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then just settling well, that's really interesting because I think there is something about, you know, if we think about like the, uh, the wounded haver, like, mm-hmm. like it's hard to have, it's, it's hard to, it's maybe hard to generate, but it's really hard to, it's hard to maintain and, and to have, um, you know, this is the generation who's not supposed to have as much as their parents had. Mm-hmm. Right. And also this is that this is a generation who, um, you know, and I think we're together with the, with the Chiron and Aries folks on this, we are raising children in the reality of climate change. Yeah. So climate, like the climate was already changing. We're just reckoning with it. (laughs) Right. But like, 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 um, there, there were already deeply violent racist practices now we're, we're reckoning with them. We're raising children in this. We're like policy making in this. We're business building with this reality. And so, in some ways, I think you know, Chiron keeps it very real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Chiron keeps it very real. And so sometimes it is maybe scary to imagine you could have it all because, like you said it all isn't all great actually (laughs) sometimes. Right. And I'm a very, you know, I'm a very like positive glass half full person, but 
with my feet firmly grounded in the reality that um, it's a heck of a lot easier to do that because I'm a white woman in the United States of America. Yeah. Right. So firmly understanding that it's both things can be true at once, right? This, this life is a gift. This world is a miracle. And we got a lot of problems that we need to yeah. reckon with and be real about. That reckoning is so, is so important, right? Like you talked about our, our generation, we will be having, we will have less than our parents. And so if you think of like that boomer generation, or if you're a long, young listener, like the early Gen X people, mm-hmm. it's like, maybe they had too much. Yeah. <laughs> Like that was just like really off the balance. And like, so now we're reckoning, even I've been, um, I've been really into AOC's green deal lately and really Mm. learning much more about it and hearing both sides of the coin say all of the people who are against it saying that it's too expensive. You know, we have to stay with fossil fuels Mm. and all we can't invest in all these Mm -hmm. new technologies. And I'm like, Mm this is reparations. Like we are paying for the last 200 years of pillaging the earth and her Mm -hmm. resources. We got to put something back now. And okay, well, if it's going to cost us more, then what's going to be more expensive? Like either none of us have a place to live. And of course, marginalized communities will always Mm -hmm. get the brunt of that. But anyway, Mm -hmm. I don't need to get myself riled up there. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) I know. But, But actually, you know, I think like Chiron and Taurus kind of kind of says you have to right Chiron and Taurus is like giant gash (laughs) giant gash here in this body that we have and no you can't ignore it right and then of course you know the beauty of Chiron is the opportunity to say okay so if I'm going to be real about this if I'm going to reckon with it then how, what is the healing that I'm bringing? Right. And that's what I see with my clients. When my clients are like, okay, I want to live well and I want to do good. Those two things are kind of hard to pair because Mm -hmm. what I've figured out is that if I want to live well, I need money and to make money, like what everyone tells me to do is unethical. Right. Yeah. But I also want to do good. But, but when I look at the people who are really committed to doing good, oh my gosh, they're like, not charging any money and they're drowning in student debt. And like, that's, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look like a a path that I want either. So how can I create the kinds of approaches to life? How can I be creative? How can I open up? Right. Again, like I'm not only going to see the glass that's right in front of me, I'm going to go, okay, wait, but hold on. There's also a faucet and there's also an ocean and there's also rivers and, Oh, some faucets dispense poison water and oh, some faucets yeah. dispense filtered water. Okay. I'm going to reckon with that. Right. I'm going to be very, very real, but at the same time, I am committed to opening up my understanding of the world to create the balms, to create the, <laughs> the splints, to create, you know, the, 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 the stitches, the healing kind of agents that we all need. And that is extraordinary. That's, that's so meaningful, you know? I love looking at Taurus, like you said, as, as like the creator, right? Like the traditional sign of Taurus being kind of the farmer, the one who works on the lands. But Mm -hmm. when we start to look at the glyph and the symbol of Taurus from that kind of feminist standpoint, it literally is the womb. It is the womb. The source of creation. Yeah. And I mean, it's, you know, it's like, it's fixed. It's the fixed sign in the spring. So it is like spring energy. And here in Maryland, I I grew up in New Mexico where we don't, we have like the season where there are leaves on the trees and the season where there aren't leaves on the trees. (laughs) There's like two and that's it. But other than that, it's like, you know, there's not much of a season, but here in Maryland, we really have four seasons and Taurus season is like flowers, yeah. leaves, pollen. There's about to be cicadas, right? <laughs> it's like, it is so bountiful in ways challenging and also wondrous, right? Yeah. Um, but yes, it's so creative. It's like everything is being born in yes. Taurus season. Yeah. 
So we all have that Taurus season. So you are that Taurus in our charts. And earlier you were mentioning, so how do we reckon, how do we reconcile this when in our businesses, right? Because my listeners are entrepreneurs and mm-hmm. we are here to build businesses that mm-hmm. enable us to thrive, not just survive, but thrive so that we can give even more from our full cups, right? Mm-hmm. So how... From your perspective, how do we consciously, mindfully, intentionally reconcile with creating abundance when we know there's so much pain, when there's Mm -hmm. so much hurt, Mm -hmm. um, when there's so much need? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a big, deep, difficult question. Um, And I do always want to underscore that, like, um, as I answer it, I'm answering it from a place of relative privilege, right? Like mm-hmm. I am a white woman in the United States of America, I am able-bodied and I have an education and I'm middle-class and right. Like all of those kind of pieces. So mm-hmm. I always like to kind of couch it in that. Right. So, um, so, so knowing that about me, um, one of the things that I find true for myself is that the metaphor goes something like this. If I am in a little tiny canoe and there are people in the water who don't have a boat and they're struggling to swim. If I get out of my little tiny canoe into the water with them, now I'm also struggling to swim. Now we're all struggling Mm -hmm. and that doesn't really work. Mm -hmm. Right. So to say that, nope, I'm, I'm going, I have a little boat, I'm going to build it. And then how can I use it to help the people who are struggling, right? Because I think one of the first impulses is, oh, I'll just, you know, do stuff for free, or I'll, I'll give away my services, or I'll take my prices way down, or I'll, you know, like, we kind of try to figure out, like, you know, how can I um, connect with the people, the people who are, you know, like, treading water. And it's just like, well, but just be generous. Absolutely. Mm -hmm but not to the point that you're also in the water, (laughs) that you're also treading water and you would need help as well, right? Like if you're able, if you're able and you're in a position to build something that can actually help, help, help you to help others do that. So I think that's one piece. So I think fill your, fill your cup first, get to the safe shore first before you start helping others. Yeah. yeah. Or like while, right? Like fill your cup at the same time that you're helping other people. I'm, I'm re I'm in a point right now where I'm rebuilding, I'm rebuilding my business. And, um, so I don't, I don't have as much, as much income as I'm used to. And I'm, and I'm kind of figuring it out and there are various little challenges and, 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 and also opportunities in my way. And I find that, um, you know, I still get requests from people like, Hey, could you offer a workshop for, you know, um, caregivers about talking about like, you know, self self care, like practices and mindset and strategies. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, we can only offer you $50. And I'm like, you know what? (laughs) I'm like, you know what? Keep your $50. I will happily offer this workshop to you. But so I can do that while I'm building my business, but I can't only do that. Yeah. I can't only do that. Right. So I think it's, you know, we have to be creative. It's like a both. And I can do, I can, I can be generous where my heart, where, what is it filling? It's filling my heart. Um, it's filling, it's, it's helping me be connected to an organization that I admire. Yeah. Like there are other ways that I'm, that I, that I'm sort of receiving in that situation. Yeah. If it's like um, aligned to your values, if you're investing in your values, yes. like if you have like a give back strategy where you're like, okay, well I can do like one free talk, a, a quarter, mm-hmm. um, or it's like an organization that you'll have different, um, impact in. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Or, wisely. you know, yeah. And some people do reparational pricing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have a version of that, I think, right? Reparational pricing where it's like, okay, I'm going to acknowledge that we don't all have access to the same amount of resources. And so I'm going to be real about that because I want there to be broader access to my work. So I think we are right now in, I, I think entrepreneurs like you, Leslie, and like me, we are figuring out right now how to solve this problem. I don't think it's a like, never this, always that situation. I think it is values oriented. And I think we have to be 
just abundantly creative about it for sure. Yes. Getting in touch that I think that's what Taurus season is about, right? It's knowing your value, knowing how you add value, knowing like what you want to invest in, in yourself Mm -hmm. that aligns with your values. Mm -hmm. All of these things, when, when you know this from this deep place that of course, astrology can help shed the light on that. If you're unclear, because sometimes it's not clear, (laughs) like there's so many options and there's all of these, um, different messages coming in from all of these people are saying like, there's one way to do things or don't spend money on this, spend money on this. And it's like, you know what? We are all designed so uniquely. There's so many different options and cutting to what is important to you. Right. Absolutely. Can I say one more little piece here, Leslie? Yes. So for for me and and Leslie and I always smile about this because she loves Placidus system and I like full sign houses. So, (laughs) so, and and I happen to have a very late rising degree. So it really does shift pretty much everything um, in my chart. But, but when I think about it, like my, my Taurus and a whole sign chart is um, third house. Mm -hmm. And so for me, a wonderful way to be aligned as I grow. It's in my everyday life. It's in my little routines. It's in the way that I am in my, in my close associations. It's the way that I am in my, in my sort of collect, in my, in my collaborations with people in my, in my neighborhood and community, like how am I showing up in my everyday doings. And when I am certain, when I take care to keep my schedule space just so that I have plenty of time with my children and also time to really give all of my attention to a client that I'm talking to. Um, when I, when I, when I know that I need to kind of prioritize my everyday life, What happens is the kinds of decisions that I make, well, how much am I going to charge? Okay. If I'm never going to have more than two clients in a single day, how am I going to price my services? If I know back to your point about aligning with values, if I know that I am definitely going to be doing donating my time for workshops, for volunteer opportunities, if I know that I'm going to be doing that, well then, okay, at the same time, how am I going to make sure I'm in a canoe and even (laughs) building a bigger boat, right? So I can help some more people. Um, So maybe some of the people who are treading water can climb up and we can go together to, you know, wherever we're headed on these amazing seas of life, right? So it's always kind of thinking about that. But for me, that's a real touchstone is like, if I want to live plentifully, it's not sort of, oh, because someday I'm going to buy a beach house, right? It's like, no, what does Thursday look like? (laughs) Do you actually eat meals on Thursday? What is like, you know, do you have, do you have ample time to take a call from your sister? Do you, are you able to, um, you know, have game night? with your, with your friends. What last thing? Cause I'm like on a roll. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> bring it, bring it. You no, know, in my, in my kind of like this, I am rebuilding my life and career right now. And I don't, unless I'm teaching like, or, or showing up for some kind of, you know, commitment that, um, is not on my schedule, like not scheduled by me. I don't really do anything after four o'clock. Yeah. I'm super happy with my schedule right now. My schedule is so dialed in. I take yeah. client calls twice twice a week. I have three days of just content creation and doing whatever I want. And it's so fulfilling. It's so lovely, right? And so for me, and so d- that means that I do, I don't take like a whole weekend, but I actually don't prefer to take a whole weekend off. I would rather say, yeah, I work like till about four most days, not always, right? For me, when I have that everyday life, I am necessarily making decisions in my business that kind of support that. And so does that mean sometimes I slow down some of my projects? Yep. Yeah. Is that a problem? No, no. I mean, your, your moon needs that, right? Like your, your Pisces moon, needs it is in yes. whole in so in whole sign houses is your Pisces moon in the 12th, first house for, it's in the pocket okay, so that makes it I can yeah. see why you love whole sign like looking at your chart in, in the in 
in yeah. um, in whole sign houses. So and, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's so it's 12th house or first house. But yeah, my Pisces moon is like, oh no, we don't can't rush be. me. Don't rush me. There is no time where I live. There is exactly <laughs> That's what I always say. My, my partner actually is like, has a lot of Virgo, Virgo in his chart. And he's, he's always like, so I think we should leave at about 1247. And I'm like, what is time? <laughs> 1247, not 1245. I'm like, 1247. Time. It's a construct. You know, it's not real, right? You know, that all times are actually coexisting. <laughs> so yeah. I just like that detail though. Also. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It should take about, should take about 10 minutes and that gives us three minutes to park. And I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> so one of the things that you mentioned a couple of times is that you're rebuilding a, mm. um, your business. Yes. And uh, you know, that this is one of these kind of big, th- these big things that I really wanted you to kind of share because, um, just watching, watching kind of the, the shock and awe of what happened and how you're rebuilding and how you're managing the pain, you're doing it with such grace and such, mm. such plentitude and <laughs> plentiness again. Plentiness. And Aww. wondering if you might want to share a little bit about um, this reckoning that you've had and how you're coming back from that with even like even better than a phoenix from the ashes. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the clarity. Well, you know, I mean, to come back again to that idea of a cup that is half empty or half full and then thinking beyond the cup, right? Yeah. The reason I became a coach and I love, I love coaching. And the reason I became a coach is that I was so astounded at how powerful our minds are in helping to create reality. So I am not a person that believes that we create reality entirely with our minds. And that is because we are all creating reality together, right? So I'm creating reality. And at the same time, I'm sorry to say, Donald Trump is out there creating reality. Don't say it's his much, name. <laughs> I know. It's, it's much quieter. It's like Bold, it's like when Voldemort yeah. disappears for a couple books in the in the in the Harry Potter books. You're like, oh yeah, he's probably got no, he's not gone, right? Or and 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 all that he represents, right? Not just him, but all that he represents, right? All that so, he represents. Yes. So it's like we're all co-creating. We're all creating reality. But it really is true. Like the way I see myself, the way I tell my story, that matters. I like mean that in like the real sense, like it it matters. It makes material life like very directly. So I can tell a version of a story where like, oh my gosh, I'm just victimized and I'm, I got involved with the wrong crowd or I married the wrong guy or I, you know, like I can, I can make this story where it's like, oh, and it was so terrible and it wasn't what I want, but I can also look and I can get really quiet and I can say, you know, I always knew there was something not quite right about that situation. I can get really quiet and I can say, huh, you know, I settled in that moment, in that decision. I let the wounded part of Chiron take over rather than the healer part, right? Or, or I, I, I separated them. Like I, I let there be I let there be the wound without addressing it. It's funny. um, Someone shared a meme on, on the socials the other day. And it was like, you cannot love the red flags out of people. (laughs) And I was like, Natalie, could you like, you need to like imprint that in your consciousness. You (laughs) cannot (laughs) love the red flags out of people. Right. Cause that's definitely, that's something I'm figuring out in this (laughs) lifetime. (laughs) Yeah. It's a good one. Right. And so, and I think we all know that, that moment, right. Where it's like, you know, I was like, I just really wanted to hire this person because I really liked them. I do. Right. I really wanted to marry this person because they seemed so. And it's like, but I knew, I knew that one date, the way that, you know, she talked to the waiter. I just knew this is not good. And sure enough. Right. And so, you know, we can, we, again, I can tell the story where like, oh my gosh, I'm a victim. Or I can tell a story where it's like, oh, I'm still learning to make better choices. Yeah. I'm still learning to make better choices. And that is, you know, really that like 
look beyond the glass that's in front of you at the bigger picture of it all and yeah. realize that like, yes, our life happens situation by situation, but it's not all bound up in any one situation. And no Anyone. regrets, right? Like no, no regrets. Like ever. You look back on it, it's like, oh, that was painful. But look at what I learned. Always, always look at what I learned. Look at what I, you know, and, and all of these situations, any disappointment, right? Mm -hmm. What did I learn? What did I get from it? What did I, you know, and sometimes, you know, that learning, it, it's not like an instantaneous thing. When the wound is fresh, you just need to tend it and take care of it. Then over time, it's like, oh, okay, I understand a little bit more. Instead of being like, oh, how did I get myself into that situation? It's like, how did I get myself into that situation? Yeah. <laughs> right? What What was I valuing? What was I What was I believing about myself? What was I believing about the world? And I think that you know, as we are all here. In, and some of us are in canoes and some of us are in sailboats, right? Like we have different <laughs> size businesses, but as we're making decisions that don't go the way that we want them to go, or that lead us someplace that we're like, shit, I knew that, like, I knew that was the wrong way, but I did it anyway. Right. Is to stop and to say, oh no, but, but like, let it be a net gain. And it's a mm -hmm. net gain when you extract all the learning out of it, when you get all the self-reflection out of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, so no regrets, net gain and just managing the pain, giving it the time to like, okay, triage that now it's manageable. Let's, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's, mm -hmm. let's figure out what happened. Yeah. And use the amazing resource that is your mind. Use it for your good you know that 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 idea of like how you're seeing the glass that is in your mind and um you know it's trite the way that the, that example but I really mean it yeah. when we're looking through the lens of I am a creator I am helping I'm helping a whole generation solve this problem mm -hmm. of it's hard to have it's hard to value myself it's hard to trust in reality, right? When I'm looking at it through that creator lens, just there's so there's opportunity everywhere. But when I'm looking at it through the like, woe is me, like that, I, I, the, I don't, you know, nothing I do works when I'm looking at it through that lens. Well, then, well, then, yeah, plentiness is it, it. Well, I guess what you're getting is plenty of um, plenty of sad, plenty of yeah. excuses, plenty of plenty of pain. Well, it helps, you know, it helps to be so optimistic. And then of course your Pisces rising and your Pisces moon really supporting that because of the, the enthusiasm, just like Sagittarius, that kind of visionary expansiveness, like really being able to see the glass half full. I, I know for us Capric for our Capricorn friends here, for our Cancer friends, maybe not as easy. So that's why we tap into coaches like Natalie. Yes. <laughs> to help you be able to see things outside of your your own perspective. <laughs> absolutely absolutely and then we tap into the Capricorn and Cancer friends to help us actually ever do anything yeah to actually <laughs> ground ourselves and like be responsible <laughs> to actually ever do anything yeah and again right collaboration we need all the kinds of people we need all, all the, the kinds types, of people all the kinds of people yeah so all right. Well, is there any, let's, I wanted to close up our conversation because this has been so awesome and I know we could go on and just talk forever, but we have a couple of things left to share yes. and wondering before we share our special offer, mm -hmm. if you had any closing thoughts um, on, on plentiness and how to live in one's fullness. You know, I, I think that Asking ourselves questions like, what am I learning? Asking ourselves questions like, how is this actually perfect? And that question is sometimes, sometimes you want to slap that question, That's like, <laughs> right? But like, how is this actually perfect? This is exactly what I need right now. How is that true? Asking those kinds of questions like, who do I want to be in this situation? Okay, here's what happened. Who do I want to be? Okay, here's what I'm facing. Who do I want to be, 
right? Mm -hmm. When we ask those kinds of questions, we open up our creativity. We open up our generativity Mm -hmm. and that generates all kinds of ideas, solutions, connections, um, and, and ways to connect and to collaborate that I think ultimately that is what we're, you know, that's, that's what our generations are up to in the world. Yes. Oh my gosh. I want to share a story of, um, who do you, who do I want to be in this situation? I don't know if we have enough time, but I'll, sh- do you have a little bit of extra yeah. time? Okay. Yeah. Cause, um, <laughs> so the other, um, the other day I was meeting with my bookkeeper and she was sitting in an office that wasn't her normal office. And I, and I couldn't see in the little zoom window, but she had these photos behind her. And there was a photo of the orange Cheeto. And there was a photo of Queen Elizabeth. And there was these like really old, like military type photos. And like, from my perspective, like little mustachio things. And I was just like, oh, what the, and I was like starting to freak out. Yeah. And so I, you know, I went to the interwebs and I went on all my Facebook groups and I'm like, what do I do? What do I do? Because I was really trying to figure out who do I want to be in this situation? Yeah. And in one said group with a a lot of other women of color, and there was a lot of like reactions, like fire that person, you know, like just like just so reactionary. And then it, but their, their reaction really helped me like figure out like, that is not who I want to be. Mm -hmm. Not like that was totally right for them, but Mm -hmm. not for me, because Mm -hmm. I wanted to lead with curiosity. I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt, but I also wanted to let her know where my values lay. And it took me a while to get there. Like after kind of our meeting and I was just like, we had just a short amount of time. So I really wanted to get through the thing, my questions in my, in my, in my books. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to like get off the topic by asking like, why do you have those photos behind you? <laughs> Who are those terrible people? Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, you know, so it, it took me a few weeks and I caught back to her and I, I said, I noticed that you had these photos and I'm curious to know what they mean to you, you know, as a woman of color, as multiracial, as half Jewish, as an astrologer, as a really liberal person, (laughs) I was like, I need to know that if if, as my bookkeeper, like you're handling, you know, really foundational things about my business, like, are your values going to align with my values? Are you going to be able to stand behind me? Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad that I I didn't react that way. And she, she sent me this wonderful email explaining um, that her husband is a longtime military person and she always has the commander and he always has the commander in chief, but Biden's photo was back ordered. So they just hadn't taken that down. I was like, okay, I can, I can handle that. It was her husband's office. And then all of the other kind of the, it was a bunch of English monarchy and military people that were from her family side. <laughs> so they were mm-hmm. family photos. And I was like, phew, I'm so glad I didn't react yeah, I, and just yeah. like fire her. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Really important. So like, who do you want to be in this situation? Maybe you don't find out right away who you want to be. It takes some time. Give yourself that space. Yeah, totally. I love that. And you know, those kinds of questions, who do you want to be? How do I live my values? I mean, you know, generous is like my key value. So if ever I'm asking myself like, okay, what's the best way, what's the best way to handle this situation that is going to take me down rabbit holes through. I mean, I'm never coming back. I'm not coming back with an answer. If you ask me what's the best thing to do, but if I ask myself, how can I be generous? Right. It might be, how can I be kind? It might for you, it might be, how can I be truthful? Right. I don't know what is one of your key values, but what a question to help you create abundant, plenty, plenty, plenty of options and solutions and ways forward, getting out of like a binary, like, yes, no, fire her. Don't say anything. Well, what if there's something else I can do? Right. So I just, I love that. That's a great story. Well, Natalie, I wrote down all of these questions because I'm going to be adding these to our upcoming workshops worksheet. Yay. I love it. (laughs) Um, So we have our Taurus new moon coming up. Taurus new moon is exactly on Tuesday, May 11th, but Natalie and I are hosting a new moon ceremony for entrepreneurs on Thursday, May 13th at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, So I know you want more of Natalie. (laughs) 
Natalie, can you tell us what you'll be um, covering Yay. during the ceremony, how you'll be opening for us? Yes. So um, one of the things I love to do as a coach is to tap into my Pisces magic. I also have Jupiter in cancer. So yes. I like, I like to, I like to tap in into my, and Mercury in Scorpio in a grand trine. So I, <laughs> I like to tap into that grand water trend and I love to lead these really creative, um, meditative visualizations and what visualization can do for us is help us to get kind of underneath that rational thinking mind. And frankly, the mind that's been trained by the society that we have, right? You went to school to get this mind. Visualization helps us to kind of get under that or around it. I don't know the, what you want to like the kind of location it is. Mm -hmm. Right. But it helps us to tap into a different part of ourselves that helps us to, to, to think in ways and act in ways that we're creating that don't exist yet, like what we're actually bringing into being. And so I'm excited to help you to tap into your incredibly plentiful, generous, generative imagination, but, but, but in a grounded way that has some, um, that has some actionable takeaways, right? So that like you're, you're getting to tap into your magic, but then you're getting some ways to actually take that and put it into your lives. So that's what we're going to be up to. It'll be experiential. And then there'll be some coaching and um, some reflection so that you get to walk away with like, okay, I know how to use this. Yes, that is so awesome. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm so excited for you to be joining. And of course, um, we I've switched up the the format of these ceremonies so that if you um, register beforehand, I will send you your mini reading so you get really clear on what is being activated for you for this new moon so you can start to plant your seeds of abundance and plentiness. And yes, because it is about our business, your money and your values. Mm -hmm. um, so the, all of that. So if you are interested, sign up very quickly <laughs> because I'm, I, we need to talk about like maxing out because I'm pretty sure this is going to be a full one and I can only give so many astropad readings. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> Listen, this is going, this is going to be a full house because, um, there's big magic when, um, when, when Leslie and I work together. So <laughs> cannot wait. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Dream come true. So head over to the savvy luminary.com forward slash new moon to sign up. Um, for those of you that pay more than $47, it's a sliding scale, but if you pay more than $47, you will get a five minute, um, mini new moon activation reading from me and everybody will get to sit in the beautiful light of Natalie's grand trine so that you can really <laughs> bring up and express those deep emotions that are just hiding in you that Natalie is going to help you spark. <laughs> ah, so exciting. So exciting. I adore you, Leslie. I have so much fun with you. I adore you. So Natalie, if everybody uh, here, how can they find you? How can they connect with you? What are you offering? Tell it, give like, spill it all. <laughs> spill it all. Well, um, honestly, my, my, what I've been pouring everything into, um, in the last couple of months is my podcast, which is, <laughs> called, which is called mind witchery. And if you are, it's almost like, you know, those, um, when you go rent movies or remember, remember renting movies and you would go to the movie, you go to the blockbuster or like the, the local video place. And they would be like, if you like this movie, you'll probably like this. If you liked, you know, like, like dirty dancing, you'll probably like fame, right? <laughs> Right? So if you like Leslie's podcast, you might like Mind Witchery is what I'm you saying. You will love Mind Witchery. I've already talked about your podcast. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and sent people so, there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm offering different ways of seeing the world and different ways of talking to yourself um, over there on that podcast. And then what else am I up to? I'm doing a, a, a very little bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching and I'm doing a very little bit of coach mentoring. I'm, I'm coaching coaches a lot these days, but um very honestly, I'm still figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out. I'm going to venture to say like all of you, we're all still figuring it out. And I'm very much in a phase of doing that. So, yeah. but for now, that's where you can find me. Well, Natalie, if you need to like re-up on an Astro Brand reading, I'm happy to like go through your chart <laughs> with you and help you like, distill some questions to see what your new business model will be like. <laughs> well, very, very honestly, that is pretty much exactly what I need. So we'll make that happen for sure. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Natalie, for joining me on this um, not too long conversation, but I hope people will enjoy it as much as I did. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Always so fun to connect with you, Leslie. All right. Okay. So join us for the new moon ceremony in Taurus. Head over to thesavvyluminary.com forward slash new moon. See you there. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a rating and review on Apple iTunes.